everybody, it's Tyler here at IRI, checking team number 6045, Sabre Robotics, a phenomenal season, win at Lake Superior. And Sabre Robotics, I gotta admit, this is one of the just like, awesomest robots I've seen in terms of having a simplistic design philosophy and how they approach this year's game. Take a look at 6045, just throughout the whole thing. You know, one of the big uh, parts of this robot, we'll be talking about this huge lead screw that they had in on here, but of course we'll be doing a full rundown of this robot and what they have to offer. Let's learn more about how they really do so well with approaching it so simple here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Seth, we talked about uh, how 6045 approaches this game. I think just the overall philosophy, you know, I think about earlier when uh, we posted a couple of your videos on YouTube Shorts of just doing really quick runs and doing so well. Talk to me about how you approach this year's game and why it's worked out for you so well. Yeah, for sure. So going into this season, uh, we are coming off of a pretty rough season last year, and we came in with a new philosophy of we want to get this robot done really fast so that we can spend as much time working on those on driver practice and autos because going into the season we figured that the autos and driver practice are going to be the biggest parts of this robot by far so right after kickoff we began the catting of this robot and about the monday after kickoff we actually had a full cad of the robot done and ready for the whole year we did get a little lucky with the design sticking right away, but that uh, go fast philosophy this year really worked for us. Uh, so by about week three of build season, we had a whole prototype of the robot done. Now I wouldn't even call it a prototype, it's more so the final design. Um, about week four-ish, we swapped out the intake. We had an original design uh, that we didn't like nearly as much. We ended up going with the everybody intake um, we'll get into that a little later, but that philosophy of build fast so that we have as much time to drive and practice with this robot really stuck for this team, uh, especially since the two competitions we went to prior to Worlds were week one and week two. So that fast philosophy really applied going into this season for our competitions. And Paige, as we get into the uh, parts of the robot, talk to me about some of your manufacturing process as you went through. I know, you know, this giant lead screw is going to be a huge topic to talk about on here, but it's talking about how your team approached manufacturing capabilities. So a lot of our manufacturing is done by hand. We have a CNC plasma cutter, which we use for things like the belly pan and some of the arm components. But other than that, it's all manual manufacturing by students, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty fun to just pass that information down from generation to generation. As so we continue looking at your robot here, I want to hear about this uh, giant lead screw that you have on here. I know we got a, uh, a little prop uh, of it over here to so talk to me about uh, how this has worked out. You know, when I think lead screws, you know, a lot of times I think slow, but your team's been able to go really fast in the field with this. So talking about how it works and if we can demo it too, that'd be great. Yeah, totally. So this lead screw is a Neo motor with one, uh, one to five gearbox. And that really just gets it done quick. It doesn't need to have a lot of torque behind it because of these gas shocks that are right here. Our arm will hang basically limp if we remove the lead screw. So it doesn't have to move that much force, which allows it to be a lot more precise. And the way that we have worked most of this out is it's a milling um, piece. It's meant for a big mill. So it's about six feet long when we get it. We cut it down into three pieces and then we lay it down here and then we um, put bolts through and we actually machine this in-house to slip onto there. You know, Paige, one of the things I'll say is your arm looks extremely stable as it goes through the uh, entire process. How did you approach like your center of gravity trying to keep uh, everything uh, nice and grounded with it? So our center of gravity is very low. The arm doesn't weigh a lot. But back here, we have a 26 pound steel block to really keep us stable and make sure we don't tip. 
Um, it's done a great job at keeping our center of gravity really low so we can throw that arm out however we want and it should be fine. That's a lot of ballast on your robot for sure and definitely looking great. Uh, Seth, as we talk about the uh, wrist and the intake to wrap up on your robot, uh, you know, we talked about how this is an EveryBot inspired uh, intake for it, but talk to me a little bit about your uh, wrist and anything you want to wrap up with on your intake too. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we were building our robot around PID for easy maneuverability. Uh, with that, we ended up going with a 375 gearbox on the wrist, which allows for gravity to not be able to push it up and down at all, making the PID much easier to plan for. Um, and with the two pivot arm, we can reach any point on the field very quickly. Um, and then as for the intake, uh, we went very heavy on the EveryBot style. Um, going in though, the big change we made to the EveryBot style of intake was we stuck to the four inch wheels rather than uh, three sets of two inch wheels. This really lets us work with the cubes really well. I think that's easily our strong suit uh, for this robot. And it really is, this one small change is really what led to all of our success just because of how much simpler it makes picking up cubes off the ground. You're, if you go over a cube, it's in, and it's super efficient. Um, additionally, uh, with this intake, we saw that the EveryBot intake uh, only had one motor on it at any time. For that redundancy, we, uh, we added two Neo 550s so that we have uh, a redundancy in the intake. Uh, if uh, one of these goes out mid-match, we are able to, to limp through a game so that we can for, for sure still get some cycles. Uh, generally, the green wheels going out is way worse, but even if you just have the gray wheels, it still is able to take in both cones and cubes uh, even afterwards. So you can still kind of limp over the finish line, still get as much cycles as possible, because that's really the name of the game for this game. Well, 6045, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your team, Rail. Congratulations on a great season. Definitely a team to keep an eye out for in Minnesota as they keep rising up in the ranks. And wish you best luck here, IRA, but looking forward to future seasons as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. Head on over to SolidWorks.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.